The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Market Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Thursday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets accelerating higher right now. Really, even in the last, you're talking about in the last basically five minutes or so from 855 this morning, you start popping. We're almost 20 points above that price level. We're 31 points higher on the session right now. The S&Ps, that's 7 tenths percent in the positive trading at 4413. You get the NASDAQ 100 catching a bid. We just hit 14,375. I mean, you look at the action, you're talking about 100 points. You see the volume coming in as well, 855 to 9 a.m. Uh, I'm not sure if there's news driving that market right there. We'll get into a little bit of the economic numbers. Initial jobless claims out this morning. Decent number, 215,000. Back to the markets. Dow up 209 points, back above 34,000. The Russell catching a bit, up 11 points, more than half a percent at 2,067. We jump over to Bitcoin, holding right near about 44 to 45,000. You're sitting 44,155. Crude giving back some of the gains. Crude gets up to 116 and change overnight. We just saw quite a drop off from 115 to 107. I think we had uh, seeing headlines out there. Uh, somebody from Germany. Right. Maybe um, maybe the chancellor. I, I, I don't know who the headline was. We'll have to pull up the news. But I think they were talking about not quite yet willing to uh, go against Russian energy, that it would cause uh, problems. I'll get that quote exactly. But I think that was what was easing some of the crude markets. You talk about moves, man. This crude market, 115 to 107, back to 110. Watch out, folks, in that market, man. Gold contract up eight bucks to 1930 right now. We were up to 1940 pre market, and we jumped to notes and bonds right now. Sitting basically right where we closed yesterday. You're up by two ticks right now in the 10 year. You're up by, uh, excuse me, you're negative actually six ticks in the 30 year. And we jump over to the VIX volatility index this morning. VIX trading under 30 as this market charges higher to 2960. We're dealing with a yield right now, 1.8. 7%. Man, these yields. Watch out, folks. You talk about some action, man. I'm just going to put this on a daily. These moves, my goodness, we go from 2% to 1.7%. We're nearing now 1.9%, just like that on the 10-year. Okay, let's jump over to the economic numbers. 8.30 this morning, initial jobless claims. Not that important, especially with what's going on in the market. Uh, the important number the market waiting for tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Non-farm payrolls, look for the wage data in that number as well. Uh, Chairman Powell, yesterday, he's ready for a quarter basis point, folks. Not ready for 50 basis points. It will take a shock to the numbers that we get over the next uh, geez, week, really. We get... Non-farm payroll tomorrow, and we get CPI data in one week from right now, March 10th, and then you have the Federal Reserve meeting the following week after that. Uh, so really, two big economic numbers looming. Non-farm payrolls coming out tomorrow, and then we get the CPI data for the month of February coming out March 10th. Unless you get like a, an absolute shock to the inflationary factors in those economic numbers, Chairman Powell, very clear uh, yesterday. And he did say, you know, if things change, inflation ramps up, would they be open to 50 basis points? And he said yes. But I wouldn't even read too much into that, folks, because of course he's going to say yes. He said all along, if things change, they will have to change. They're going to have to follow where the data goes. So that's a pretty simple answer to give. I think it would take a substantial level of inflation to drive him to have to start doing 50 basis point hikes. Um, but boy, we'll see what happens. Oil pushing what? 107 right now, where are we sitting at as we speak? Crude right now, trading 109.24, down a buck on the session, but you're jumping five to 10 bucks in crude. Uh, and look at that daily, right? <whistles> Maybe getting a little bit parabolic at the top, possible. We reach 116.57, it's been a one-way ship since 65 bucks. Remarkable, that crude market. 
Okay, uh, getting into the jobless claims number. So we come in at 215,000, lowest since the week ended January 1st. Four-week average, continuing claims, lowest since 1970. You got some variance in these numbers, so a four-week average, probably a little bit more indicative of the true numbers or the true trend of this economy, uh, fell by more than forecast. I think the market was looking for 225. Yes, it was. You come in at 215. Uh, the trend is your friend on this as to lower numbers for continuing uh, for initial claims. Continuing claims, little changed. 1.48 million in the week ended February 19th. The four-week moving average for continuing claims, 1.54 million, lowest since 1970. That's 52 years ago, folks. Uh, staggering how many records we're setting. And then, as they say, the data comes ahead of the non-farm payroll numbers. Markets looking for 415,000 in February. Now we got ADP yesterday. If you missed the show yesterday, uh, ADP comes in with 475,000 jobs added for the month of February, private payrolls. But man, what they also said is they revised and they revised from, I think, a 300,000 loss to a 500,000 gain. So they said, ah, you know what? We missed by 800,000 jobs last month. So let's just make that revision. I will not be paying attention. Uh, we'll be talking to Kevin Higgs coming up after the break. And as he put it yesterday, a little explanation, please, of how you missed by 800,000. Otherwise, that data is going to be worthless. Uh, and so with this number, I give caution of 475. Most of the time, you're looking at that number and you're saying, OK, maybe that's indicative of where we come tomorrow, right? And it might be, but boy, 800,000 revision on a monthly basis. What's going on right now, folks, is there is so much volatility in this market. Analysts struggling to forecast what's going to happen here when we're in a time like none other. Um, analysts are able to forecast off of models that have to do with history. It's very difficult to model out the end of a pandemic with inflation surging uh, and the job market pretty tight while we have so many jobs opening on top of that. Lots of factors going on, and you add war on top of everything else. Uh, this market, it's popping, though. You look at that flash low we had. You're talking about 313 points now in the S&P off of, I believe that's last Thursday. Man, time is remarkable. Yes, it is. Last Thursday uh, was the day you had that huge turnaround. You had the NASDAQ down 2 or 3%. It ended up 2 or 3%. We're not even a week into that trading, folks. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, and you're pushing some pretty lofty levels in the S&P, but the reason why I bring it up is have some caution here because I'm just going to take a trend line and you're nearing, you're nearing that area. Now, this is an art, not a science, folks. You could easily use a little bit of linear regression and maybe that trend line is inching a little bit lower. Maybe it's matching up with some of the highs that we had from the end of January when we first peaked out, actually February 2nd, then we had a similar peak on February 9th. You had a lower peak there February 16th. Uh, you use a little linear regression, you're probably coming up to pretty close to that area in terms of where that trend line may be. Uh, we'll add one on the bottom here to see what we're talking about. So yes, encouraging to bounce off the bottom, right? But that's a pretty clear channel line, folks, and we're pretty clear at the top there. So I would keep those spikes up on your shoulders, man. Um, 4,400, 4,100, uh, 300 points in the S&P, the moves. Pretty remarkable. All right, we're going to come back with our man Kevin Hinks. We'll be talking some market action. We'll be talking some earnings. Uh, Best Buy, we'll get into their numbers later in the show as well. Best Buy, up about 5 bucks on their numbers. You were at 85 on that flash low last week. You're going to open today at about 105. Yesterday, you're sitting at about 100. Backing off all the way from 141. I've been talking about it, folks, these 618s. We'll talk about it a little bit more after we talk to Kevin. 618s, they're all over the place in this market. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. 
Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps positive by 32 points right now. You're looking at a NASDAQ 100 positive by 1%, up 142 points. Dow up 211. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time on the TD Ameritrade Network, Fast Market. Your host, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action, folks. They bring on some amazing guests. They talk about hypothetical trade setups in this market. They talk in options, defined risk. Kevin, I always say to you, man, a lot changes in a day, and we got the S&P. I just pulled it up. I said, where were we? It seems like a lot's happened since we, uh, 100 points, Kevin, in the S&P since we chatted 24 hours ago. Good morning, man. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, what will be today's news, right? I mean, these markets aren't even open yet, and they've already been extremely volatile. Did you see the, uh, the rip in crude oil about, oh, about 25, 30 minutes ago? That, I mean, crude oil went on a major uh, cool. sell-off. And then kind of recovered. I don't know what it was. Maybe it was a rumor. But, uh, you know, I was scanning, trying to find out what was making crude oil drop. But it just shows you these markets are stretched, right? Especially crude oil. You know, uh, I was just talking on the air. And if you look at the crude oil market and look at the July futures, the you know, the front month futures in crude oil are trading – Oh, you know, they're, they're, they're looking right around $110. But if you go out to July, it's only about $97 uh, out to July. So there's big gaps, big premiums in the front expiration versus the back month. So, you know, if you go out to August, it's only 93 or nine, well, nine, $94. So crazy um, price activity in the, uh, in, in everything going on here. It's just, it's just, like I said, these markets are volatile, and you've got to really make sure you're controlling your risk and things like that. It's it's getting a little crazy here. But, but yeah, I don't. I was talking. I was talking about crude, man. When we started off, and um, and I think it was the. I'm, I'm trying. A German Germany economic minister, I think, said I wouldn't support an embargo on imports of fossil fuels from Russia. I would even speak out against it because we would threaten the social peace in the republic with that. So maybe um, the market thinking that Russian oil isn't quite off the market yet. That, of course, uh, its own topic. We could spend an hour on. I'm sure, Kevin. But yeah, ten dollars down almost, and it's pretty remarkable when you got a three dollar bounce, Kevin. Or the 
span of 20 minutes and we're sitting here saying, yeah, but that's like barely a pop, right? Because crude is crashing right. so hard sometimes in this market right now. Uh, the Russia-Ukraine situation, the commodity situation, obviously playing into this market. We get initial jobless claims this morning, decent number, 215,000, uh, four-week average, lowest number since 1970, continuing claims, Kevin. Lowest number when you put it on average since 1970. Uh, remarkable, and that comes ahead of tomorrow's non-farm payroll number. What are you looking for the action as we come into a pretty big economic number tomorrow? Yeah, you know, the geopolitical headlines right now, Tommy, are very loud, right, and very noisy. But behind that is a pretty good run of economic data that, that we're seeing in terms of ADP in terms of jobless claims, some of the ISM and PMI numbers have been pr pretty strong. Even consumer sentiment has ticked up slightly. So we've got good economic data uh, underlying this crazy, loud, noisy geopolitical market that we're in right now. So, you know, non farm payrolls tomorrow are supposed to be 390,000 and 3.9 unemployment. Remember, it ticked up a month ago to 4%. So, our you know, average hourly wages are looking for 0.5 tomorrow. Uh, a month ago was 0.7. The markets would like that if that number came in slightly less. So uh, Jerome Powell's going to speak again today. You know, he is a pretty proficient delivery mechanism for either good or bad news. And all politicians should take a lesson from Jerome Powell on how to deliver news to the markets, because the market seems to really embrace when he gives news, both good and bad, Tommy. Boy, they embraced it yesterday, right, man? I mean, I, I, I pull up the chart on Lake or Swim right now, man, and at 10 o'clock, the markets were basically at lows at 43.23, and he was talking. It seems like 50 basis points isn't even close. We got a couple big economic numbers, of course, ahead of their March uh, meeting coming up in a couple weeks. But, yeah, pretty reassuring in terms of where Chairman Powell's head is at, at least right now, at least as of yesterday. Um, and he talks again today. We got some earnings. We got some companies already moving this morning, Kevin. What are you guys going to be chatting about at Fast Market coming up at 12? We've got three good names for you today, Tommy. We've got Boeing in the A block. Look at what the overall world has affected them. We're going to trade, uh, like Foley is going to look at Costco, and then Marvell we're going to look at. So uh, we've got three good names today. Nice. Always interesting, the Boeing angle. I got Boeing up here on my Thinkorswim uh, platform on a weekly. I got a pretty decent down channel uh, on this yep. equity. Um, pretty well defined, man, even as you look at it. But yeah, travel, breaking back out. I've been talking about for a while. I've been talking about with you, man. Um, travel, breaking back out in a big way. Maybe there's some exposure for Boeing. I have some Boeing in a retirement account. I'll be checking out the program at 12 today, Kevin. We appreciate the conversation, man. And it's Thursday, so I don't get a chance to talk to you for five more days since uh, until Tuesday, Kevin. And it, it's pretty remarkable with this market where you say, man, five days, where's this market going to be? Um, but Defined risk. We'll be watching your program, man. If a time in history, defined risk. I like that action, especially that crude market, man. Anyway, we appreciate the conversation, Kevin. We'll be watching at noon today. Have a great day, Tommy. You too, Kevin. Take care. Folks, tune in every day. I love talking to our man, Kevin Hinks. Uh, outstanding program. I've learned a tremendous amount from that program myself. I encourage you to check it out. Even if you don't trade options, folks, understanding the options market to give you a better understanding of the equity market is, is value tremendous as well in terms of the implied moves, um, the implied moves present on a weekly, monthly, whatever it be basis as you come into earnings especially. All right, jumping around to some of the companies with earnings. We'll kick it off with Best Buy. Best Buy shares trading higher. Uh, the market, a little bit of a flash low on their numbers at 7 this morning, but you trade up to 111. We're trading right now at 105.70. We jump over to the headline for Best Buy. Come on, where are we at? There we are. Investors bet pandemic gains will outlast fourth quarter supply chain and staffing hiccups. Uh, getting into it, shares rose. Sorry, there it is. 273 versus 273. They miss on revenue. Um, net sales decreasing barely, 16.37 billion. Same store sales falling as well. Um, analysts anticipated same store sales were only going to decrease 0.9%. In the year ahead, here we go. Best Buy said it expects revenue between 49.3 and 50.8. That's a little bit below where they were thinking. Uh, earnings slightly below as well. 
same store sales to further shrink anywhere from one to four percent that's compared to 1.4 percent decline um pretty bleak numbers for this company to be trading higher when you think about <coughs> i mean i just went through they kind of missed on everything they missed on well they, they tied it on earnings they missed on revenue uh when you look at same store sales they missed when you look at in the year ahead they're going to be below even at the top end of their revenue expectations below the analyst estimate earnings for the year below their analyst estimate even at the top end and same store sales shrinking one to four percent over the coming year Yeah, however, is this what's saving the company? That would be pretty lame, in my opinion, folks. However, as it looks to the next several years, he said the company expects to see demand return to levels higher than pre-pandemic sales. Well, he's got a few years to make that happen. Uh, now you see why that thing spiked lower initially. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors tfnn is excited about our new software charting program the art of timing the trade charts in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now. You got the S&Ps up 24 points, NASDAQ 100 up 93 points. We just pulled back a bit in the last few minutes, but quite the acceleration from 8 a.m. this morning. You were trading at 14,200, NASDAQ 100, almost a full 200 points to the upside from that price level. 
excuse me, and then we've given up uh, about 60 points from there. Dow up 197. We jump to commodities right now. You got crude back to 109.55. Uh, and that was, I'm just going to jump around uh, because this was the action, I believe, that was moving uh, crude. Germany on Russian energy imports. So Robert Habeck, maybe, uh, German economic minister. And that was kind of the quote there saying, I wouldn't support an embargo on imports of fossil fuels from Russia. So you're going to see some divergences here, divergences here. Uh, but man, as this war pushes on and, and the civilian death toll may possibly, unfortunately, to put it lightly, rise, uh, the pressure is going to build. And that's putting it lightly, right? Uh, but right now, as of yet, not quite yet. Now, I mean, these are the headlines you're going to start seeing. A Russian oil and gas embargo is in the cards, and analysts warn it will have a huge consequences, which is probably why it wasn't in step one of the sanctions. But I, see, I feel like it's coming. And it, as the analysts say, it, it will possibly, as far as I understand it, have huge consequences. But you just look at some of the numbers, folks, in terms of the number of percentage of po uh, energy that they provide to Europe and beyond. It's pretty staggering. Uh, let me get the exact. We're talking about 40 percent. Let me get this number. Here we go. So uh, for months, you have the tensions rising. And then you have a full supply disruption to the EU, potentially, which receives 40 percent of its gas via Russia pipelines. Now, you fast forward from that. You have uh, somebody talking about here, Brenda Schaefer, senior advisor for energy at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies Think Tank. That's quite a name. Uh, we're in unknown territory. If you pull 13 to 50 percent of the global oil out of the pool, sanctions on Iran and Venezuela, it's not even comparable to what that could do to the global oil market if you actually pulled away most Russian production. It's possible, folks. All right. That's why you're seeing this market so volatile from 117 to 107 to 110 back to 108.63 right now. The market's trying to understand the potential impact of pulling 15 percent of the world's oil off the market when you already have the supply chain issues and all the factors coming into it from the shock of the pandemic not a good time to pull 15 percent of the oil from the market as you can probably understand but nonetheless that's uh the reason why you saw that pullback as maybe it's quite not yet in the cards and listen as i said to kevin you could spend an hour talking about that it is a very sad deal to put it lightly what's going on over there putin is a very very bad man to put that lightly as well the carnage to civilians over there um it's it's amazing to see a a, a city a democratic city getting shelled by missiles. So that is not going away soon. And this problem is not going away soon. And oil is not probably backing down anytime soon because the pressure is going to build on democracies to stop buying Russian oil, as tough as that may be, and energy uh, on some of these countries. You got to have energy to survive. So that's the battle you're seeing play out here. But you're going to see this battle play out and you're going to see the pressure be constant for an extended period of time, folks, which is why this market's going to be probably under pressure to the upside for an extended period of time as well. We're sitting at 109 right now. You back things up on crude, man. You just got above where we were trading at in 2011. So you're talking about trading at prices, folks, we haven't seen since 2008. We hit a high today, 116.57 above everything we've seen since 2008, August of 2008 to be exact. Uh, yeah, quite the run, man, quite the run when you think about it. We got $6.50 on this chart, um, but actually trading to negative around that time one of the best trades out there, that energy and crude trade, as we've come out of that pandemic and crude prices roaring higher. All right, let's jump around to what else we have going on in this market. We'll jump around to some of the stocks out with their numbers. We covered Best Buy, uh, BJ's Wholesale, shares tanking, 13.8%, had not looked at this one yet this morning, uh, 4.36 billion, a miss of the 4.4. Uh, what is their symbol? BJ, of course, because this one's an interesting one. We're going to pull up Costco next. Is that right? 
Yes, it is. You're down 12.4% right now. We put it on the daily. Uh, and there's your drop off. You're basically back to prices we were trading at in August of last year. We put this on a little bit of a longer term time frame. Not that bad. I mean, you were almost pushing all time highs, right? We came into this thing at 70 bucks. You were pushing 74 for an all time high. Even taking the beginning of this run that we had that started early last year, right to the 50% is where we jumped to on this morning's action. 55.41 and uh, 55.61 is the 50%. Maybe we make it back to that 618 to 51.20 for BJ's. Let's see how Costco's is trading. A little bit higher for them, 532. We take a look at the weekly. So they pull back right to the 382 there on January 24th. Now, I think we have Costco numbers coming up. Is that right? Yeah, I think they're today after the bell. Costco numbers. You're looking at a $22.86 move. Um, and that's about a 5% move. There we go. Ed Young, that's quite a name. Yeah, I missed that guy. He was an awesome guy. Talking about in the Tigers den, man. He was he was a, an amazing man. Missed that man a lot for sure. He 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 nailed those commodity markets, man. All right, markets giving it up a little bit right now. We got the S and P's up 18 points, back to a short term time frame, five minute chart, right back to 4400. Let's continue jumping down the line with stocks. Big lots trading lower as well, uh, weaker than expected earnings. Dollar 75 a share versus a dollar 89. B I G is their symbol. And they get almost all of it back on the open. Such interesting action sometimes on some of these companies that have earnings. We'll jump around. Burlington. Yeah, they're tanking it as well. Let's see how they open up. Quarterly earnings, 253 versus 260. No, excuse me, 253 on 2.6 billion in revenue. Market was looking for 325 on 2.78. That is quite a big miss. B-U-R-L is their symbol. Watch out. Watch out. Wow. You're right back to where this thing was trading at in March 9th of 2020 um, from 357 to 196 on Burlington. Yeah, and that is quite a miss, man. Um, revenue wise, right? What is that? $180 million, which represents what? 7% almost in terms of what they were supposed to take in. Now, Kroger, I talked about, I have bad experiences with Kroger, but. That must be an isolated incident, folks, because they're trading higher. Uh, this thing's got quite an up channel, and you're breaking out of it, man. You're up 8.6% on their numbers. Fourth quarter adjusted earnings, 91 cents a share, revenue of 33.05. Market was looking for a profit of 74 on revenue of 32.86. Um, yeah, that's quite a number. They're doing well, to say the least. And what's so amusing is when I was in a Kroger, I think I was in Tennessee. I was traveling last year. And... The problem was is that they had no checkout associates to help you. So everything was self-checkout. Now, we all know that even last year at this time, right, you're dealing with supply shortages in terms of human capital. Um, but everybody in line was livid. And I found myself saying, man, this is unenjoyable. But guess what? They aren't paying anybody and they're taking it to the bottom line, I guess. And uh, people are still shopping. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. 
Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now up 24 points. And keeping your eye on that trend line, folks, we are kind of at a critical area here because you trend lower and you trend lower, man. You're making lows right around 4,000 on this trend line that we've been in for basically the entire part of this year, 2022. Uh, all right, jumping back to other headlines, got to talk about Russia, Ukraine, of course. I mean, Lavrov out there saying any ceasefire deal must demilitarize Ukraine. I bring that up because you have another round of talks going on today. Uh, and I would not expect too much from those talks, at least right now, folks. And that's trying to, you know, pair the language in terms of the expectations. Um, second round of talks between Russia and Ukraine due to take place Thursday in the Balaweza forest on the border between Poland and Belarus, a Putin ally from where Russia forces invaded Ukraine last week. It's a location famous for a meeting in 1991 of the leaders of Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia that marked the end of the Soviet Union. I bring it up because again, Ukraine must still be demilitarized. Ukraine has said it won't agree to preconditions or ultimatums. That's not happening, man. All right, Zelensky's not going in there and getting demilitarized with a Putin takeover after everything going on. They're just bombing their civilian billion buildings. Um, and yeah, it is a humanitarian crisis unfolding before our eyes, folks. You got a million refugees um, escaping Ukraine. The poor children in these families, man, young kids. As somebody that just had a young kid, I can't imagine having to have young kids go through something like this, trying to escape your own country. It's getting attacked in a period of war. But that's the reality we're living in right now, folks. And that's what's happening. Um, and you got a million people displaced from that war. So, yeah, you know, we got talks going on today. But I would not imagine that goes anywhere anytime soon. Unfortunately, it's probably going to have to get a lot worse until talks are even possible, which is tough to even say the words of. And I hope that's not how it plays out. But I don't imagine that these talks are going to be anything today with that type of ultimatum from Russia and everything else going on, uh, to say the least. Pulling up some other headlines as I'm jumping through what I got here. Yeah, so this one. Europe's biggest port is very worried about Russian war impact. Um, you're going to see these impacts persist for a while, folks. Russia is super isolated right now. They're an energy powerhouse in terms of what they export. And I don't know how geopolitical tensions ease anytime soon with Putin backed into a corner and becoming severely isolated. I mean, this is not what he game planned out folks okay getting cut off from the world all the oligarchs having to sell all their stuff yachts getting taken um overseas uh i imagine many people in putin's sphere did not think that it would be a full-scale invasion that would basically blow up life in russia uh the facade of a democratic country is gone now 
And that's a scary proposition when you think about the spot that they're in. I mean, what happens in Ukraine when they take these cities? I know I'm saying stuff that's fairly office, obvious, but um, you're seeing it play out. They've, you know, the news overnight, right? Russia taking one of the um, southernmost cities. You're talking about a port city. They'll have access now. But how are they going to hold that city when many of the people that are in the city, if they still even exist in that city, don't want them to be there, et cetera? Um, anyway, you're going to see these influences play out for an extended period of time of months, if not years. Europe's biggest port is where the sharp end of sanctions against Russia looks likely to hurt the Netherlands, even if the nation's economic statistics might suggest otherwise. Uh, measured by foreign direct investments plowed into that country, the Dutch stand out as by far the most exposed among economies listed by the IMF. Such data distorted by factors such as Rotterdam's outsized role as the premier hub for European trade. Analysts point to the harbor business and agriculture as the Netherlands' most vulnerable sectors to the crisis spiked sparked by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Uh, that reflects its position as a bellwether of global growth, along with its ranking as Europe's region's fifth biggest economy. So investment in Russia as proportion of GDP, Netherlands, 12%. What is going on, right? Islands at 7%. Uh, a lot of that coming from portfolio, which is the black versus Blue is foreign investment. Swiss out there for the first time not being impartial. Uh, Swiss are up there as well, but interesting. Netherlands, man. Um, a stable economic world order is essential to the Netherlands. Yeah, and that's just, uh, there's a lot in flux right now, to put it lightly. Products like flowers, vegetables, and fruit are hit via two channels. They're important export products to Russia and are energy intensive. I mean, look, at you're talking about farmers, right? They need energy. They need all that stuff. Overall, the direct trade impact of Russian sanctions is likely to be limited as exports to Russia account for 1.1% of the Netherlands' overseas sales. Um, there's many unforeseen impacts possible of what's going on right now, folks. I mean, the easiest one to see playing out right now is that we got crude rocking higher on the potential um, for embargoes, on the potential for taking certain percentage of global energy just out of the supply. If you're talking about LNG, you're talking about 40% of what Europe uses. If you're talking about just straight out oil, you're talking about 13 to 15% of the world's supply chain at a time when already oil had just went from 60 to 90. All right. Now this thing is rocketing higher on geopolitical concerns. Just not sure where we wrap up from there. All right, we'll jump to specific equities because uh, we get it. We got geopolitical concerns, folks, in a big way. Uh, Box out uh, with their numbers. They're trading higher, 24 cents a share on 233 million in revenue. The market was looking for 23 cents on 229. I believe they're just Box, right? Yes, they are Box. And they give back a lot of those gains on the open. 26.89. You're up 3.4 percent, uh, but they sell off from 28 bucks right on the open for Box. Yeah, Intel gets downgraded by Morgan Stanley. Um, downgrades of value stocks will let us focus more on actionable situations that offer relatively more attract, attractive risk reward going forward. Uh, INTC is their symbol. So they drop on that news from about 49 to 48. Right now you're down 1.5% for Intel. You take a look at the weekly on Intel. Folks, technical analysis, right? Look at this area we're in, man. Intel trades from 67 last year. You were at 56 to start the year. You trade below 45. Let's back it up even further on a five-year weekly. I mean, 45 bucks, folks. You're looking to get into Intel. That's a nice area of support dating back to 2017, the end. First time you kind of found a bid. Now, yeah, you might go down to 43, and maybe you scale into this position uh, with a market that's highly volatile right now. But, you, you know, you don't have to be a brilliant chart technician folks to see an area of support on this chart and intel sitting at about 44 bucks you just popped right from that area uh intel down 1.4 percent though on a downgrade on them so maybe you have to hold off a bit on the flip side of that you got southwest they get an upgrade luv from evercore and they still give it back up let's see 
Yeah, they give it all up. Market does not agree. So they were talking about greater relative financial strength and margin-focused planning lead, led them to raise their rating on Southwest. Market says not so quickly. You're back to 42.31 for Southwest. Let's jump to JetBlue, see how they're trading. 14.33, our man Kevin Hinks, Tom White, they're going to be talking about Boeing coming up on the program at 12 noon Eastern time, Fast Market. If you liked Boeing at near 200 this morning, you're going to love it at 192, folks. I joke, uh, but Boeing, so tough to find a bid right now on Boeing. There's your three-year weekly, folks, and maybe Boeing coming down to the bottom of this trend line. You're talking about maybe 180. You're trading at 192 right now, down 2.9% for Boeing shares. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 12 points. Market giving up a little bit. The Nasdaq barely hanging on to the gains, up about five points right now. We jump to the 15-minute. You see that acceleration? It has been fast and furious. 14,391 at the beginning of the program. We give up almost 200 points. We'll call it 150 points. 14,247. Uh, we got all the commenters in the den. Frank, DG, what's going on, man? I can't even talk about geopolitical issues without everybody getting all political. Uh, our man, DG, I mean, he thinks, you know, conspiracies and elections don't matter folks in the youtube tigers den so he's got all the comments in the world the sad part of the reality folks is that you're we won't get too into it um but those two fine gentlemen in the tigers den it's a sad reality playing out folks where everybody 
just likes to hear what they agree with, all right? Can't even talk about war going on when the market's getting hit and talk about something like that without somebody saying, get off my politics, old man. Um, they can go do their ranting somewhere else if they don't like it. I think I'll decide how I do my show, guys, and you guys just, just decide to watch it or take a hike. How about that one? Um, instead of just being old, cranky people in the comment section, which seems for the norm, unfortunately. All right, S&Ps, we'll get back to the market. It's a sad deal, folks, you know? The election conspiracies in there, DG, that's just bogus, man. I'll use nice words. It's just bogus. Um, and when we have democratic norms falling across the world, I got very little patience for people that like to spell conspiracy theories about U.S. elections, folks, okay? Because that's just lies and propaganda, all right? And you shouldn't be afraid to call it what it is, because if you are, we are going to be on a democratic slide to negative territory. So don't be afraid to call people out just because they might be a little bit angrier and a little bit loud than you are. Don't be afraid to stand up for what's right when you see that stuff going on in life, period. You got to protect what you have, folks. You're seeing it play out in the Ukraine right now, in Ukraine right now. S&P's up 19, NASDAQ up 29, Dow up 196, and the Russell into negative territory, folks. You're off 10 points right now at 2045. We check in on crude. The volatile commodity of the session, we're back near 110 at 109.61. Folks, thanks so much for starting your trading day with me. I love what I do. You guys and girls are the reason I get to do it. It's such a privilege. Thank you for starting your day with me. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next with the Tiger Technician Tower at Larry Pesavento at 11. You heard Fast Market. They'll be talking Boeing coming up at 12 along with some other companies. Steve, stay right. Tom O'Brien this afternoon. Have a great Thursday, everybody.